Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, I'm Dr. Tim Magner. I'm the president of the Greater Shreveport Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of uh, Renew Shreveport, the Shreveport Bossier African American Chamber, the Greater Shreveport Chamber, and uh, BRF, we want to welcome you to our uh, press conference here this morning. Uh, we are a group of uh, organizations and individuals who are uh, coming out today in support of the bond election that will be held uh, at the end of April. And uh, we are delighted for the opportunity to be able to speak to you today about our support for this important uh, investment in our city's infrastructure. And we believe that it's a critical time for us as a community to reinvest in the roads and uh, water and sewer systems that are indeed the lifeblood of our community and we hope that our community will come together uh, in support of these investments so that we can uh, rebuild the foundation of our city and not only for our citizens but for uh, those businesses and families that we want to attract to our community. I'd like to uh, bring forward uh, Ms. Callie Combs, the Executive Director of the Shreveport Bossier African American Chamber for uh, some remarks. Callie? We would like to extend our sincere gratitude to the mayor, city of Shreveport, city council, and also the renewed Shreveport team for their bond, for the bond team, for their dedication and hard work in making this bond a reality for our communities. It is truly a new day in Shreveport, and we are excited to see the positive changes that will come from this investment. As the African American Chamber of Commerce, we are proud to support the bond and the efforts to improve our roads, our water systems, parks, and more. We're especially grateful for the focus on prorating a significant portion of the bond allocation to the majority African American districts, ensuring that these areas receive the attention and improvements that they deserve. We are committed to working with the mayor and city officials to ensure fair share participation with minority contractors on these projects. By increasing these opportunities for minority participation in our businesses, we not only improve our city, but we also support the economic growth and development within our community. Thank you again to Renew Shreveport, the mayor, and all initiatives, all involved in this initiative. We are truly on board to renew Shreveport and to make our city a better home and better place to call home. My name is Scott Ward and I'm excited to announce the official launch of Renew Shreveport today. Renew Shreveport is a group of citizens, businesses, and various organizations who are coming together in unity to support the bond of 2024. Our mission is to educate the public on how this bond will impact our citizens, how much it's going to cost us over the, the next few years, and uh, how we're going to, uh, to basically uh, uh, manage this bond that's going to be different than the bonds before it. So that's, that's a key point to Renew Shreveport, is to, to get this information out to the public. In the coming days, there will be more uh, groups, community leaders, civic leaders that are going to be in support of this, and will we'll come out to, uh, to help us with a yes vote for April. Um, 27. I love Shreveport. Uh, I was born here, raised here, my family's here, my business is here, and it's important that we reinvest into the city that we call home. So today you'll see our new logo, Renew Shreveport. Uh, our website is renewshreveport.com. So I would encourage you to go to that website and pledge your support for this initiative. So remember to get out and vote yes for all three propositions on April 27th. And if there's anything that we can do, we'll, we'll stay after this for any questions. Thank you so much. And now uh, we have a, a video message from uh, Council President uh, from, and uh, District E Representative uh, Dr. Alan Jackson. But I do want to share some comments. I want to let people know that um, for my district, I've heard the calls. I've received the calls. I received your email. And I truly understand the problems that we have in this city. When we talk about our infrastructure, when we talk about fixing it the right way versus patching roads, patching potholes. So I'm pleased to say that we have a bond proposal that's up for your vote and I need your help. If we're gonna do things the right way, we need your help. 
I'm asking you to support this bond so we can have the additional funding in order to fix things, fix our sewer system, fix our water system, fix things the correct way. Um, the days of patchwork is over. Um, we owe it to the citizens to making sure that we're doing th things decently in order. And you have my full commitment that we will honor that commitment. I just need your help in order to support this bond. So make sure you get out to the polls. Make sure that you vote yes on each of the three bonds that we're putting forth for you. Um, you have my full support, and I'm hoping that I have your full support as well. Thank you. This is a great day for Shreveport. It's a day when we can start this campaign to kick off a reinvestment, a renewal of Shreveport. One city, one vision. It's so important that there are groups, the groups of people that are already on board and we're excited about who will be. I wanna thank, particularly thank the Shreveport Bossier African American Chamber of Commerce, the Greater Shreveport Chamber of Commerce, Renew Shreveport, of course, and BRF for their early support in getting this kicked, its campaign kicked off. I think it's important to know how this bond proposition, these three bond propositions came about. It was a grassroots effort. It was from the bottom up, not from the top down. In August of last year, uh, I requested that city council members give me two names from each council district so that we'd have 14 people representing the geographical and population diversity of the city of Shreveport. I added five people to that, and then I added an additional one at the request of the Central Labor and Trades Unions, uh, Le Central Labor and Trades Council, so that the voice of labor would be heard in these deliberations as well. These 20 people then held numerous public meetings. All of their meetings were open meetings, and they held numerous meetings including several, four at least, listening sessions. So what they did was they took some of the projects that the department had said were, were priorities for them or needs for them, and they added to that their own ideas. Then they added to that the ideas of the uh, people that they heard from in the community. After they did that, they had a list that was way too big to ask the voters to approve. It was over $450 million. So they then began the process of setting priorities, and I am pleased to say that their priorities were based on need, not politics. And that's the most important part of what we're dealing with today, is that these recommendations that the council is making and that, that the Citizens Committee made are based on need they're not based upon, uh, upon politics. I think it's important to note that when you look at, and you'll be seeing information about this throughout the campaign, when you look at the division, among, even among the council districts, even though that was not something that was a specific goal of the committee or of the city, it is very evenly spread among the districts and as well as some very significant projects. There's $125 million in street and drainage projects, all, almost all of which is surface, surface work. The drainage part of it is a replacement of four bridges uh, that desperately need replacement for water flow to go under them. But they are streets all over the city of Shreveport. Uh, you'll be seeing in the presentations that I'll be making, and I plan to make as many presentations as people will let me make uh, in the city of Shreveport. I'll be joined by various council members. I'm delighted that Grayson Butcher is here today. Uh, I, I'm sorry that Dr. Jackson couldn't be here, but as you know, he is in full support uh, of this. I believe that uh, Councilman Bowman will be supportive uh, of this. She's under the weather today, so she was not able to be here. I spoke with her this morning. One of the most important things to know about these projects is that we have committed to the engagement of Waterboard pro Program Managers who will oversee the, the, uh, the work. They will supervise the work to make sure that the work is done in a way that moves the projects along. What we hope to do is when, when these bonds are passed, it'll take us about six months uh, almost six months to actually get the first money on the books. 
But once we get that money on the books, our goal is to have these projects completed within a five-year period, a very short time. Uh, so we, have, we are committed to that. I, I want to make sure that you understand. I, I, I think it's that this little chart I've given out, it's the last page in the information that I, that I gave to the press. This chart says a lot about where we are in Shreveport. The chart shows the total mil property tax millage for the city of Shreveport. It shows the debt service millage for the city of Shreveport. And then it shows the operating millage. If you look at the blue line, which is the operating millage, you'll see that it has been flat since 2003. So that is the money that pays for streets, drainage, not reconstruction, just the maintenance of your streets, drainage, police, fire, your basic city services are provided by that. The green, the green is the total, as you can see, the green millage drops almost every year from 2003 until 2000, this chart goes to 2026. And the reason for that is the orange. The orange is the debt service millage. We started in 2003, debt service millage, the, the amount of property tax millage is dedicated to paying off bonds was over 30 mills. It's now down to just over 10 mills. What that means is since 2003, we have been proportionately and consistently investing less and less and less in the infrastructure of our community. That's why it shows that we've been committing less and less and less to the infrastructure. It is time to reverse that process. Now the good news about that is in reversing that process because of really the wisdom of our bond council and, and the other team members, we are able to do this with no anticipated property tax increases for, for 2024, 2025, or 26. And then some small increases, that's on the next to last page of that handout, some small increases in 27 and 28. So although this does involve some additional taxes in 27 and 28 and years after that, there are no new taxes in 2024, 2025, and 26. This is very significant that we could pass these bonds, $256 million in bonds, and get these projects rolling without significant property tax increases, without any property tax increases at all between 2024, 2025, and 26. By the way, that includes the anticipated sale of the remaining bonds from the 2021 bond issue that was passed. So that's very good news for our community. When I, when I took office, I talked about the, the bones of Shreveport and, and how we needed to breathe life into those bones. Part of breathing life into those bones are these stickers uh, and, and buttons, I love Shreveport, that, that builds our heart. But in order to build the flesh, and the flesh on the bones, it's time to make investments in the city of Shreveport. This is part of breathing the air into those bones to make them come to life. So I am here today to ask you, to implore you, to beg you if I need to, to pass these three bond propositions on April 27th. Early voting is April 13th to April 20th, except the 14th, which is a Sunday. We urge all of our citizens to go out and vote, and we urge you to vote yes. I want to especially thank the City Council for their leadership in moving this forward and uh, look forward to working with the administration and the community going forward to ensure that these projects are done in a, in a timely manner and in a way that benefits the entire City of Shreveport.